One of the first things you did when creating a website in JavaScript was probably create a few event listeners for a button or two. But if you don't understand how event delegation works inside of JavaScript, you're most likely going to run into problems in the future where your events don't quite work like you expect them to, or maybe they're only working on some of your elements. So if you run into those problems, this is the perfect video for you because I'm going to be explaining what event delegation is as well as when and how to use it. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And to talk about event delegation, I really would quickly want to go over the code we have so we can understand exactly what's going on. Really simply, we have some HTML that has a button that when we click on it is going to add a box to our page, relatively straightforward. And then we have a grid with all of our different boxes. And by default, we have three boxes on the page. So when I refresh, you can see we have three boxes on our page. Now, if we look at our JavaScript, this code right here is just for adding a box to our page when we click the button. So when we click a button, adds a box. That's what this code right here does. This code down here just loops through all of the different boxes on our page, and it's going to be adding an event listener to each of our boxes, and that's just going to toggle this clicked class, and all that does is change the box to have a black background, so you can see we can easily toggle between this state. Every time I click on a box, it's going to go from black to white and so on, and if we look inside of our CSS, you can just see right here that that's what that class is doing. It's relatively straightforward. Really, the important things to understand about this code is that I have this add box button that is creating a box whenever I click on the button. And then I have this loop right here that loops over all my boxes and adds an event listener to each one that allows me to toggle the state of those boxes. Now, the problem that we're going to run into, which is the problem that most people run into if they don't realize how events work in JavaScript, is that these top three boxes, the ones that start on our page when we load it the first time, for example, if I refresh, you can see these three boxes are always there. You can see they work and I can toggle them just fine. But if I add a new box to my page, I am currently clicking on this box a bunch of times, but absolutely nothing is happening. And that's because the way our code is written is essentially this JavaScript file runs as soon as our page is created. So if, so if we refresh our page, you can see we have three boxes and then this code right here runs. So it's getting all of our boxes, which is these three boxes right here. It's looping through all three of those boxes and adding an event listener to each one of those three boxes. So all three of these boxes have event listeners. When I create a new box and add it to my page, this code that's adding event listeners to my box is never being called. I would have to re-add this event listener to my box. So I could copy this code up into here, and now all of my new boxes are going to have an event listener added to them whenever they're created. If I save my code and add a box, you can now see that this is working because this code is working for the boxes that are currently on my page, and this code right here is working for all the new boxes that I add to my page. But obviously this is not super efficient code because now we're duplicating our event listener multiple places. And if we had even more places where we created boxes, this would become exponentially more complicated as we added more and more places to create boxes in our code. This is where event delegation can solve this particular problem. And event delegation is essentially taking an event at a top level and passing it down to other elements. Generally, this is going to be done on the document level. So instead of looping through all of our boxes like this, we're going to comment out this code, remove this code right here. So right now, none of our boxes have any event listeners on them at all. And instead, I'm going to add an event listener to my document level. So we're going to come in here, we're going to add an event listener, and we're going to do this on click. And right now, we can just do whatever we want inside of here. For example, if we just console.log clicked, this is going to log out clicks to the screen every time I click, no matter where I click. Let me just make sure I get my syntax correct. And if we actually inspect the console here, I'll zoom this in a little bit so it's a little easier to see. And now anywhere I click on my page, doesn't matter if it's in a box, this button here, outside of the boxes, doesn't matter. It's always going to log clicked because anywhere I click in my document is going to run this event listener. Now, the idea behind event delegation is we're taking an event that happens at a parent, such as our document, and we're delegating it down to one of the children. And the easiest way to do that is to take this E right here. We can console.log our e.target, and that's going to be getting whatever we click on. So now if we inspect our page and we look over the console, if I click on a box, you can see I get a div with a class of box. If I click on this button, you can see I get my button down here. And if I were to click on something else, such as my document, you can see now I'm getting my entire HTML document. So it's just getting whatever element I'm currently clicking on. And we can check to see if this matches a particular selector that we want to do. So here I can just add an if statement that says if e.target.matches, just like that. And we want to check to see if this matches a certain CSS selector, in our case, dot box. So any element that has the box class on it is going to return true right here. So we can just for now console.log clicked and let's look at what this looks like. If we inspect our page, 
go to the console. If I click on this button, nothing gets logged. If I clicked on my document, nothing gets logged. But as soon as I click inside of one of these boxes, you can see it's logging out click on the side of my screen. And it doesn't matter if it's one of my original boxes or if it's a new box, it's always constantly logging out clicked. This is essentially the entire idea behind event delegation. Essentially, we're taking an event that occurs on one of the parent elements and we're making sure we delegate that to its children, but only the specific children that we want. And this pattern of e.target.matches is generally how you're going to do that because you can just type in any CSS selector you want inside of here and it's only going to pass it down to the elements that match this particular selector. So if we wanted to make our code exactly the same as before, I'll just copy this line that toggles my class and put it directly inside of here, get rid of all this. And now you can see we have one single place where we're defining how our box is going to behave when it's clicked on, and it's going to work for new boxes, old boxes, and any other boxes we create. You can see right now when I click, it's not doing anything. That's because this must be e.target because it's supposed to be the thing I'm currently clicking on, which in our case is a box. That's just a typo on my part. But now you can see all of these boxes, I can change their style. And if I add a new box, you can see it doesn't matter how many new boxes I can add, I can toggle every single one of them however I want. This is actually such a common thing that happens in JavaScript. I usually create a function to help me handle this. For example, I can create a function that's called add global event listener just like this. And this add global event listener function, I'm generally going to have take a few things in. For example, I'm going to take the type of event such as click or mouse over and so on. I'm going to be taking the selector. The selector is like dot box or so whatever thing I want to select. And then finally, I'm going to pass in my function, my callback function. So it works exactly the same as your normal event listener code, but it's taking in what the thing you want to do it on is. Then all you need to do you just copy all of this, paste it into here. We have our document. We're adding an event listener of a particular type. We want to use our selector in this e.target.matches section. And then finally, we want to call the callback inside of this if statement right here. So if we match this particular selector for this type of particular event, then we're going to call this callback. And to use this, we would just write something like this, add global event listener. I want to do it on the click function, just like that. I also want to do it for the dot box selector. And the code that I want to run is just going to be this code right here. So I'll just copy this code, paste it into here, make sure I take in my event. And again here, make sure I pass in my event. Now, if I just comment out this code, remove it. Now we are doing the exact same thing, but this nice helper function is making it easier. You can see all of my boxes are able to be toggled no matter if they're new or old boxes. Now, another way you can use event delegation that's a little bit different is delegating only inside of specific sections of your application. For example, right now I'm just doing event delegation on my entire document. This means any box anywhere on my page is going to have this callback that runs whenever I click on it. But what if I only want the boxes inside my grid to do this while boxes outside the grid, I want to do something entirely different. To take a look at this, what this would look like, I'm just gonna come in here, copy this down. I'm just gonna paste in two boxes right here. You can see we have two very large boxes just because the styling is not super great. I'll come up here, I'll clean up the styling here. We'll say that the width is going to be 50 pixels and that'll make those boxes the correct size. So you can see my boxes up here inside my grid, boxes down here are outside of it. And currently I can click on any of these boxes and they all have that click event. But what if I only want the boxes that are inside my grid to have this click event listener? Well, then what I can do instead of using this directly on my document, I can use it on my grid instead. So I'm going to paste in grid right here. So now only the elements inside my grid are going to be checked for this particular thing. So now you can see when I click my grid boxes, they are going to be properly toggled while everything outside the grid has no click. I'm clicking these and nothing's happening. And even on new boxes, if they're inside the grid, they'll work while if they're outside the grid, they will not work. And this is so common that I actually extend this method slightly by adding in a parent section, which by default, I set to the document by saying parent equals document. And then I just replace this with parent here. So then what I can do down here is I can just pass in that optional final parameter of what the parent element is, which in our case is the grid. Now, when I click on an element in the grid, you can see it toggles. It doesn't matter if it's new or not, but anything outside the grid will not have that toggling happen. Now, this may seem like a minor difference, and in reality, it kind of is a minor difference, but the reason that this is really important to understand is because a lot of times in your application, you may have sections of your application that behave differently than other sections of your application. For example, you may have a sidebar and a main navigation and then like a main content section, and you want them to behave slightly differently with the different event listeners going on. So you can say, okay, only the things in my sidebar are going to have these particular event listeners added and none of my other elements are going to have that. So this is a really great way to add event listeners to specific chunks of your application without affecting any of your other application. 
Now, this is just one of the many different things you should probably know about events. So if you want a full crash course on everything you need to know about the event listener, it's going to be right over here. And if you want to take this deep dive into every single JavaScript concept out there, I highly recommend my JavaScript simplified course, which will teach you everything you need to know about JavaScript from absolutely beginner level things to more advanced and senior level JavaScript skills. So if you want to check that out, it'll be linked down in the description below. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.